This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Blender 2.83 is out and there are several new amazing time-saving features that we need to talk about. So let's look at how to use those new features now. In previous videos, we've talked about ways to save on time when rendering while using artificial intelligence to denoise. That was something they added a few version back and the way you went about doing that was coming over here to your view layer properties and you turned on denoising data and then you came into your compositor tab over here and then you could feed your normal into the normal your albedo into the albedo and your image into the image and then push that into your composite and you would get a much quicker render now with this new version of blender 2.83 we have a couple new ways to denoise and not only do we have new ways we can also combine those ways so let's look at how to use those now these first few features require optics, which is on an RTX video card by NVIDIA. And I realize that not everybody watching may have those, but stick around to the end of the video because there's going to be some techniques that will also save you time that don't require optics. It's also worth noting that optics is becoming standard among video cards, and it is possible that in the future you may find yourself getting one as well. So first of all, let's look at some of the options we have there. So one thing that we can speed up now is viewport rendering and the quality viewporting. So you can see here that as I move around, this viewport looks awfully noisy. And when it settles, it still looks noisy. And you can fix that by cranking the viewport render samples, but it takes a long time to render, of course. So let's go ahead, let's turn this down to 10 so that we can kind of make this a little bit noisier and show off the effect more. Now under sampling render viewport, we have what is called viewport denoising. And you can see here that at 10 samples, it is pretty noisy, but if I click here I can turn on optics AI accelerated denoising and you can see now that it will clean that up now it doesn't process until the end so you're still going to get noise as you move around but you can see that it gives you a much quicker result so that you can get a better idea of your end product as you go now let's look at where else we can use these optics AI accelerated denoising so you're already familiar with the AI denoiser over here, as we mentioned before, which is Intel's denoiser. And now we have the optics denoiser down here. So we have the denoising tab, which gives us our traditional denoising controls. But now we have an optics AI accelerated option. And if we click that, we then get an input pass. And here we'll automatically kind of put all of our passes there. As I've mentioned before, I've saved up to a thousand percent time in renders when using AI denoising. Now for here, I used an example to compare the Intel compositing based denoise versus the optics based denoise. So let's take a look at that example in the scene here. Now results may vary and I'm very curious to see what kind of results you guys get in the comments below. So let me know what your results were. So here's the Intel based scene and we can see here that there's still quite a bit of noise here, but I'm also maintaining a lot of detail here in the bed and this rendered in 47 seconds. And this is the Intel AI denoiser. Now let's switch over to optics. Now this rendered in 45 seconds, and that may be due to the fact that it takes a second to composite at the end. So it seems like they render at about the same time, but I'd like to hear your results in the comments below. Now you can see here that it's gotten rid of a lot more noise, and you can see here there's not noise in the bricks and there's not noise around here in the shadows but I've also lost some detail in the bed. I've lost a little bit of the lint and that's to be expected at such a low sample rate. Now, in my experience, it seems to be that the optics AI denoiser is giving me a little bit more better results for what I'm rendering, but I'd love to hear what you're rendering with your characters, your architectural renderings or abstract renderings and see which one gives you better results. Either way, they're pretty comparable and they both save a ton of time. This last feature that I'm going to cover does not require optics, which is great for those that don't have fancy new video cards. So under sampling, there is now adaptive sampling. If you click that checkbox, it will turn that back on. So here you have a noise threshold and here you have minimum samples. So I'll explain what that does. What automatic sampling does is it looks around at your scene here and when it's rendering, it will only sample at the full rendered amount when it needs to to remove all the noise. Now the noise threshold here will determine how much noise is allowed to be in your render and if you leave it at zero it will automatically determine what it believes is the best value. Now minimum samples is the lowest number of samples it will drop to in those areas that we mentioned before. Now I've read online that some people have seen 15 to 30% increases in their render times with this which is really awesome. 
I did a test with this scene again, and the reason I chose this scene is because it has quite a few objects, but they're cartoony objects, so it's not overly complicated. So I feel like it's a middle ground, and it's not really an extensive test, but again, I'd love to see the render results that you have in the comments below. Let me know what you got in your realistic scenes or your abstract scenes, and tell me how much time you saved. So let's look at this scene and how much time it saved me. So here you can see that rendering the full scene at a thousand samples it took me three minutes, one second. And if I come to this next slot over here with adaptive sampling on, you can see that it only took me two minutes and 54 seconds, which doesn't sound like much, but it's quite a bit when I'm rendering out over an animation. And you can see that there's absolutely no quality loss between the two. So it's a really great tool to kind of speed up your rendering. And when combining this with the denoising methods that we mentioned before, you're looking at saving serious times on your renders and being able to render full projects on single computers even. Let's take a minute to talk about Skillshare. On the topic of producing more content with less hardware and AI, how about this course on simple productivity and how to accomplish more with less? Learn to produce more renders quickly by being more productive. I recommend checking out Skillshare. They have thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I've been using it for years and I love it. I've improved my characters, compositions, and layouts through their many design and illustration resources. They also have a great selection of 3D classes, including some made by me. Skillshare is great for beginners, pros, dabblers, and masters. It's especially great for lifelong learners who love to explore. With such a large library and variety of topics, Skillshare is a really great way to expand your skill set to make you a better all-around 3D artist. Start learning for less than $10 a month and get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. As usual, I love when you tag me with your creations on Instagram, so if you find yourself using any of these new features to save on render times, tag me on Instagram so I can share it to my story. And again, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped.